Friends, welcome to yet another very special hobby stream on this very special day, Friday, not Wednesday. Uh, during Titanathon from Tabletop Titans, thank you for coming over here and checking us out on Hobby Titans. The man to my left is permanently banned from the Tulsa airport due to a misunderstanding at Einstein Brothers Bagels. Tom, if you're listening, this isn't over. I'm talking, of course, about my dear friend and colleague, Mr. Brett Lee. Good, Good, how's it going? Goodness gracious, great balls of fire, Zach. <laughs> we are going to paint some very small but very cool airplanes today. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to just talk about the situation at the Tulsa airport and weave that into the fact that we are painting airplanes. Oh, yes. Um, and I did. Yeah, okay, did we that got thing. that out of the way. <laughs> I got that out of the way. All right, these um, are different airplanes. These are different airplanes. And Brett is definitely not grounded when it comes to Aeronautica Imperialis. In fact, we played this game on Titan's stream uh, Monday. On Monday. We will be playing... So much fun. Yeah, and we will be playing again this Monday. We'll talk about that in a bit. And Brett is uh, is Brett Maverick Lee over there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I had some really <laughs> lucky dice rolls in the first turn, and it was uh, it was amazing. Yeah. Don't want to spoil it, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I did well. If you didn't watch that, watch it, please. Um, we think this game is very special. This is, actually, Brett and I play some specialist games, but um, this is the one we both really liked. Yeah. Otherwise, I think you like specialist games overall a lot more than me, but I love this one. I, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a specialist games guy. You are. Uh, partially because I, I really like the rules and the, and the the game systems, but also because I'm just a super hipster, and yeah. anything that's niche and out of print, I am like, 10x more more likely to enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> to enjoy. Uh, but yeah, we definitely have this in common, and it's you know the the summer of COVID was spent a lot playing playing Aeronautica. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, the summer of COVID. Geez, that was two summers ago at this point. Um, okay, well, we should jump in here in a second. Um, we're going to be painting the Xiphon Interceptor, which came uh, out just recently in the newest Aeronautica release, which is called Wrath of Angels. I like um, it. We're going to paint it. We're going to paint it to look like ultramarines yep. because I want some blue space planes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've got red, you've got uh, green, green, and you've got white. Uh, white. white. So, so what's next? Blue. So, so blue. Makes sense, right? Um, are we ready? I'm ready. Okay, folks. Let's get creative. Okay, I did not shoot one of my super fancy videos today. But here he is. This is the finished ultramarine Xiphon Interceptor. It's so cute. It is cute. I love the scale of this game. Um, these things paint up super quick. Today, we're going to take you from uh, zero to hero here, basically, <laughs> with this thing. There's a couple of steps I have done already, and we'll talk about that, including, obviously, assembly. But I will also say, as a person who doesn't like assembly, Wow, these models are so easy to assemble. I think I assembled everything in the Wrath of Angels box in about an hour and 15 minutes. Did you use glue, Zach? Of course I use glue. Okay, good. I actually use plastic glue mostly. What? And um, yeah, I really love putting these models. Well, okay, let me not lie. I don't love putting them together, but they're nice to put together compared <laughs> to some other stuff, which I don't always love putting together. You don't hate putting them together. I don't hate putting these together. Usually it's kind of funny. They're usually like one big piece yeah. and then like two or three other things that you just snap in real yeah. quick. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Yeah, what's and, our process? And we'll get going then. And, and Brett and I want to chat a little Aeronautica. You know, this is a hobby stream, but this is a game we love. So we want to chat a little bit about some of the so some of the, the yeah. reasons we love it, um, hobby and otherwise. If you guys have aeronautical questions, let us know. We are super stoked to paint some tiny planes. Yeah. And super stoked to talk some tiny planes. Why don't you sh show us where we're starting from? Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Here they are, these little, they almost look like a little bat wing when they're, they, no You know definition. what they look like? Is the dark wing duck. Okay, the dark wing air, duck, air, yes. Yeah. Which is kind of mod modeled off of like a goofier version. A of goofier bat plane. Bat plane, yeah. exactly. Um, okay, so what I've done is assemble them, obviously. I've primed them, obviously. And <clears throat> I've put my first base coat down. I used an AK paint, dark blue. There is no... Such a creative name. There is no, <laughs> there is no uh, mystery <laughs> here. Dark blue. 
oddly enough, I find dark blue to be a bit of a medium blue. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a medium dark blue. Okay. Um, so that's what I've done next. Now, let me show you what I'm going to do, and then we'll talk about what Brett's going to do. Yep. We're doing this thing that we talked about on Monday where since we're going to paint two Xiphons together, since I've painted all the other Xiphons because they're my Xiphons, um, and I, don't wanna, I, I do want to put Brett to work on my models a little bit. Yeah, that's, but... that's basically the role I play here is <laughs> I, I help Zach paint his armies. Yeah, we, we want <laughs> that consistency thing. So I'm going to do the airbrushing. You know, you keep telling me one of these days you're going to help me paint my Bring armies. Bring it in. Bring in the Templars. I'm excited. <laughs> I want to paint some black. Um, no, we absolutely should. No, I'm just joking. Um, I'm going to, uh, to do the airbrushing. Yep. Brett is going to get started on some decals, yeah. and we'll go back and forth on what we're doing there. Then, once we're finished, what we'll be doing is just a little bit of brushwork. Um, what I have found with Aeronautica models is you go a long way with airbrushing. You get 85% done, but yep. you do want to go find something in the model to make it a little interesting. Yeah, a little bit of visual interest with some edge, highlight, headlight, edge highlighting or some detail work that you exactly. can do with a paintbrush. Um, so that is going to be like a really the, where we spend almost, I would say, most of our time yeah. today. And so what I've got over here is um, I've got uh, two models that Zach has uh, gotten to. We've gotten to just like the next, the, the, all the work that Zach's about to do, he's already done on these. So these are um, airbrushed with a little bit of some highlight highlights. There's a mask applied here with... Uh, so we've got some some stripes, yeah, some some stripe work on these guys, and uh, I'm going to be picking up sort of where Zach will be in in about an hour. Mm, and oh, that's more like I think. 15 I'm not minutes. giving you enough credit. No, All right, I think 15, like 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to start with these guys and uh, and do uh, the uh, the decal application. Yeah. Now, um, Brett, if you could, uh, let me actually. Can I grab these two guys Absolutely, real quick? Yeah. And can we do a zoom? Okay. I will show you guys just a couple things that I'm, that I'm doing um, here. Let me show you compared to the ones I'm about to do. Sure. So first, um, you guys know, if you've seen me paint my Asuriani Hornet, um, you know that one of my favorite ways to add a stripe to a vehicle like this, typically I actually paint the color first. And then, so I, I paint that color. Uh, and on my Asuriani, I actually happen to have one here. Phoenix Bomber, this guy I'm also working on. He came in the Wrath of Angels box. Okay, I actually uh, painted the blue here first. Yep. The model was primed, primed black. I painted a, just a splotch of blue, uh, the dark blue, and then a little bit of the light blue, and then I put the piece of tape over it. Yep. And then I painted the rest, and at the end I pulled up. So it's almost like a reverse masking, yeah, I guess. Yeah. That's what I always recommend. So why am I not doing it that way? Well. After I painted these Xiphon Interceptors uh, without the stripe, I said, oh wow, they need a stripe. <laughs> but I was too far along. So I'm going to show you the, the way I think normally we think about masking, which is I finished, oh gosh, now I need to yeah. put a stripe. Yeah. Which is not really what I recommend. Yeah. If I, you can plan yeah. it out ahead of time yeah. and you know that you want and need to do a stripe, it definitely makes it easier to do the stripe first in a, in a weird twist. There is another situation going on here, though, because I will tell you that I had a bunch of planes that look like this, including the ones we're about to work on, these two guys, and I said, well, I could put the black stripe on right now yeah. and start over. But then I realized, well, I could do that, mm -hmm. and I could even go back with the dark blue, and I think the dark blue would have handled it. But because my stripe is black, and I'm going to be adding a bunch of lighter layers of blue, I was a little worried that it might show through. Right. So I said, you know what, no, I'm going to show everybody at home how to do masking and striping the way that a, uh, you know, I'm a spaz when it comes to painting and I paint every day. So I, I, that's why I knew to do that. And I learned this the hard way anyway, also with my Suriani. But I'm going to show you the way you're going to learn the hard way too. Yeah. So in case you already learned the hard way and you want to go add a stripe, we're going to show you that way. Right. Yeah. yeah. And this is the way that, that I do it because I don't plan my stuff out as meticulously as you do. So I'm excited to, uh, to try it the wrong way. <clears throat> yeah. To do it the wrong <clears throat> way. Show, show everyone way. how to do it the wrong way. Okay, so let me, uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is, I'll show you guys, this right here is a bottle of Teclas Blue. Now, Teclas Blue is this great color. This is the color Brian really uses for his Ultramarines. And we thought we would, well, I like the look of it for one, but we also thought 
here as a studio, we like the idea of sort of painting things to match at different scale. Yes. Um, so you can do narrative games that way. You've got, you can fight an aeronautica battle, and then the outcome of that aeronautica battle can, you know, you can have that impact yep. some 40K game that you play later. That, that's, that's the real reason to do it. We have an additional reason here at the studio, which is, you know, Adrian takes shots. And so, yeah. like, we can have a, a 40K battle on a Thursday night between Simon and Ultramarines. Yep. And we can, you know, Adrian can shoot these videos where they're, they're having a sky battle at first. And then we can go down on the I land. I don't think so, we're supposed to talk about that. About the sky battle? Because the first time you see, like, little planes in a Warzone clip for a 40K battle, oh, it's going to be like, whoa, okay. I can't believe Spoil they did that. Uh, Spoiler. Uh, sneak peek here, right? Sneak peek, yeah. Um, right. So that's one reason I wanted to, to do it. Now, Teclas Blue is not a Citadel air paint. It is only a layer paint. It doesn't come in air. So what I have done is I had a spare bottle of Agarax Earthshade that mm. had just the tiniest amount in the bottle. I reluctantly threw that super tiny amount out, washed the heck out of this bottle because <laughs> I did not want it tinted brown. I took the Teclas Blue layer bottle, emptied it out, let it sit there for a little while, Pour almost all of it out. Yeah, and then I used um, a, an acrylic thinner. You can use any. There's a MIG one right here. This is actually not the one I used. Yeah, back on the walls, the AK one we also use. They were all the same, um, and I pretty much made my own bottle of Citadel Air, Air from, from yeah. Techless. What's the ratio you use approximately? Well. That's a great question, and I'll be honest with you. Again, with the Badger, yeah, and um, it doesn't super matter, but I didn't measure exactly, yeah, which I should, and I, I, I do normally. I do it for my Asuriani color, um, but this one I kind of did that thing where I was like, let's get it the consistency of milk. Right. Um, I think I made it a little too thin, and to remedy that, when I came in here and start working. I popped the top open and I sat on the shelf for about an hour. <laughs> um, so it, it's and it's like been that. perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't uh, why don't you get to it? Yeah, let me show you guys. Um, so the Teclas Blue uh, is the first thing we're gonna do. This is another one that's kind of in progress right now. So the Teclas Blue is this this phrase Brendan and I like to say where it is the color of the thing because we're gonna do Teclas Blue almost all over. That said, you can see a couple places here where I'm gonna let it stay a little darker especially towards the back of the model here. Um, and then, just so we know what's coming up, there will be a uh, another airbrush of AK paint here, Snow Blue, uh, which is a color I, I also really love. So I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna put Teclas Blue kind of all over the place, but especially, um, like, well, especially in the front of the model. I'm actually gonna paint kind of coming from the front. As always, checking my flow. And there we go. And so you can see, like, things things happen fast with a tiny model and a Badger Patriot. You know, I sort of thought I'd have, like, you know, 20, 30 minutes to get these decals on, but I'm thinking that's probably not going to be the case. I don't think so. But take your time. No rush. Um, so, oh, this guy. Uh, I, one of the reasons I got into Aeronautica couple of reasons. Um, as a hobbyist, let's start there. I got tired um, up until really the beginning of COVID. When it came to painting 40K, all I ever painted was my towel and my um, and terrain, which I did a lot of, to be fair. And terrain was kind of this way I, I did something different. Yeah. Not to mention the towel also have like the, the crew. Right. <clears throat> so there was some variety there. But I want to paint some different models, and I and I do love Jet Fighter. So it it all kind of lined up, and I said, hey, look, I'm going to grab Aeronautica. Um, COVID had been going on for a month. My wife and I were also um, looking for two-player board games for obvious reasons. And so I said, look, this is something I can buy. I get the hobby, and then Megan and I can play it together. Yeah. And, and so it was, it was kind of a slam dunk. Wins on multiple fronts. Exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, the, I, I initially painted the orcs in the Imperium, then later the towel came out, which was not an exercise in getting to paint something new for me. <laughs> um, but, there we go, by the way, there's the Teclas Blue. That's um, it. That's it. Oh, by the way, I'm lazy, I don't paint the underside of my models, guys. It's not lazy, it's uh, efficiency. Yeah. You're just optimizing for something else. If somebody's looking at the underside of one of your Aeronautica models, and then judging you for it? I, well, I, I mean, I just don't know why they're looking at the underside of an aeronautica model. 
frankly. Um, because so, they're completionists. You know, there's some people that need to complete every side quest. It's true. Um, so, I, I recommend these as um, something to paint up, to paint like a new feel. And yeah. I'll, I'll go a step further and I'll say, while there are not, um, while there are not Aeronautica uh, factions for every Warhammer 40k faction, yeah. there are now for several of them. And I do think it's not a bad idea for a place to say, hey, maybe I want to start an orc army. Here's an interesting way to start painting orcs. Now, you won't be painting any skin. Right. But, right. Know, Which is maybe a good thing. Maybe a good you. thing. Yeah, maybe maybe a good you, don't, <laughs> you don't want to be painting <coughs> gobs and gobs of orc skin. <clears throat> exactly. Excuse me, guys. Exactly. And um, that said, also, like if you did then want to go into orcs, yeah. you'd be in this position where you're getting to kind of say, Hey, you know, I got the armor plating process of orcs down now. Yep. So when I jump in and I'm doing this like crazy painting orc skin thing, you know, I'm 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 like a step ahead a little bit. You got it figured out. You got a recipe starting to percolate in your brain. And, and one less thing to concern yourself about. So um, yeah, I will say that it, it made me think a lot different, and frankly, it was probably the um, the catalyst that then made me say a couple months later, like, hey, I'm gonna paint a Suriani army. I've always thought they're kind of cool. Um, I get tired of playing Tau all the time. Yeah. And I said, yeah, let me... Um, I can do this. Let, I can do this. I just I just painted a bunch of fleets in different colors. It's not that intimidating, yeah. I think that's one of the big draws for Aeronautica and maybe part of GW's calculus as well, is that, yeah. uh, you know, this is a game you can get into in a weekend. You can buy the box yeah. set, you can paint up a few ships and be pa playing a game on, a Sunday, uh, on Sunday night. You can buy the box set on a Friday... And be playing you with painted minis. You can be painting, yeah, with uh, especially if you're airbrushing. But even if you're not, um, okay. Now I'm moving on to honestly the final airbrush color here. Well, for the blue, I then have to do the black stripe in the goofy way. Now you guys know I typically don't thin my paints. I do. I did find that this AK snow blue with the Sotar. Uh, the Sotar did not love this blue. Yeah, the Sotar has a. 0.25 yeah. millimeter airbrush needle, so it's a really fine needle. It's a little finicky. And um, so it doesn't like paints that are too thick. That's right, and um, Brett, Brett's absolutely right. And what I will say is I, I think maybe I won't have any problems here because I'm only doing two, but earlier in the week when I was doing the rest of the Xiphons, I was doing uh, seven Xiphons and two Storm Eagles. Um, I can show you guys the Storm Eagle where I'm at on that too. Um, so right now it feels great. So I did add a little bit of thinner. Again, um, I wasn't super concerned about the ratio because I'm only doing two. Mm -hmm. But um, if we want to zoom here, I'll, I'll show yep. where I'm going to put the, the this. And it's going to be, again, here's my here's my where I need to be. And here's where I'm at. Um, I'm always this testing this. This is just this. a highlight. Yep, see, it's doing this again. A little, little bit of splatter there. So I'm going to use my brush, my toothbrush, and make sure it's not coming. It's not doing that. Hmm. Yeah, I have to test this again. I think I really have to thin this one some a lot. splatter? Yeah. I'll try it off to the side here. All right, well, while you're figuring that out, I'm going to show where I'm at here. Yes. Uh, so I've got um, I've got one of these done. Zach's, here's our here's our test model. It's got uh, an omega on the on the left wing, or I guess pilot's point of view on the right wing. And then a, a numeral on the on the left wing, and so I've got here the omega on the right, and I've got the number two put on the left wing. And so then this next one here, I'm going to be doing the same thing. Uh, so I'm just soaking these in uh, a little bit of water. If you've never worked with decals before, um, this is a great way to add some. You know, in, in the way that the airbrush is sort of like easy mode for for bulk color application, decals are easy mode for for uh, for detail work. So you can get a lot of really nice polish on your on your model for uh, for not a lot of effort. Yes. Um, there's a few tools you need. So a sharp knife for cutting out the decal um, is helpful, as well as a pair of tweezers. And then we're using this product called Microset. Uh, as well as its companion product, Microsol. Um, and Microset is a solution for uh, helping the decal apply to the surface. And then Microsol is a, is a product for that it softens the decal once it's applied. 
and gets it to sort of conform to the surface. If you've got sort of a, a curved surface or something with um, that's not perfectly flat and you want the decal to soften and, uh, and conform to that surface, um, once you've applied it, you, you, you paint Microsol on top and it will um, uh, help the decal to conform to that, that uneven surface. Now, lots of people will say you don't need to use Microsoft if you're going just on a flat surface. Yeah, I'm uh, one of those people. Yeah, I, I do it because it, it does still help dissolve the model a little further. Yeah. Um, and can can go a little bit of ways in helping you get like that, um, the like edges, the edge look off right. of them. Yeah, and if you if you notice, uh, well, you, it's sort of hard to see here. Um, one of my decals has sort of got crinkled edges uh, on it. And I'm, so I'm going to use the Microsoft to get rid of those on this guy. Um, I don't know. Can you, if if with the zoom, can you, can you show that one there? I'm oh yeah. Switch over. All right. Can you? Is it possible to see that there? I don't know if you guys can see that the, the, the so edges it's on really the really not that crinkly on the you Omega did, you symbol. Did a pretty good job, but it, it's a little bit there. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, Brett's right. The the Microsoft will get rid of it now. Okay. Here's, here's the deal, guys. My uh, my Sotar does not love this snow blue, so I'm going to use my my. Patriot. Do you want to use the this guy? No, that's no. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Brett's asking if I want to use an Iowata, which is a little thinner, but frankly, I'm, I'm kind of overreacting anyway by using a Sotar on this. But what I will do to sort of, man, my Badger doesn't love this paint either. What I will do to sort of, uh, I don't know, this is, a, this is a funky paint. Let me give it a better shake. Um, <clears throat> I just did all these other paints like no problem, but this stuff loves just splattering a little bit. Which is so funny because I use AK paints a lot. I've never, this is like the worst color you want doing this too. So we'll troubleshoot it here together on air, folks. Let's see if just spraying, uh, giving, it, giving it a little bit of a shake. And I can try thinning it even just a little bit more, um, which I don't think is the issue. Anyway, I love the color, snow blue, but I will say, yeah, it's a little finicky. Every now and then you get one of these. What's another super finicky color? Um, well, Upshanti Bone can be if you don't do it right. It's fine to airbrush though, right? It's fine to airbrush. Okay, let's see if this is any better. It is a little better, so I'm going, I'm going with it. Going for it? All right. No, not really. Hmm. Well, we're just gonna have little speckles here. So normally when you get speckles, there's something you can do with pressure too, right? Yeah, there is. Um, this is actually a little bit better. There we go. Is it high, it's higher pressure you want, right? If you're getting speckles? Or am I, am I misremembering? Um, yeah, yes, so what speckles kind of typically mean seems to be okay now. And I can go back and clean that up a little bit. What speckles typically mean is that, um, this is one of the reasons I use my toothbrush a lot, is that paint is sitting, is kind of drying on the edge here and then spraying off of the needle. Uh, and so it looks like that is no longer happening. So we're doing a crescent kind of right at the beginning of the wing here. As you guys can see. Nice highlighting. And again, remember, when you're airbrushing, especially if you're having a little bit of an issue with a light color, which, by the way, if you're going to have a problem airbrushing, it's almost always going to be... It's always going to be on the light color. It's going to be like, uh. oh, yeah. Which is unfortunate, right? Because that means, like, you're close to the being done. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so if you're going to have a, col a problem, it's going to be with that. Um, but remember, your previous Wait, is that, color... Is that, like, actually true, or is that just it is Murphy's it, Law? No, it is true, because um, okay. typically they're, they're, there's more pigment in them <clears throat> per the pigment to like liquid ratio. Um, okay, now I think I'm actually okay with this, but what I will show you guys real quick, just so just so we can see the process here, um, is yeah, that's looking pretty good. What I will show you guys real quick is you know the eraser thing, and that's if you're if you're new to airbrushing and you're thinking about getting in. Um, one of my favorite things about airbrushing, and this is something it has even over. Um, well, it, it's not that you can't repaint spots with a brush as well, but with airbrushing, you're just putting the paint on so thin um, that yeah. your erase, it, it truly is like an eraser. You're, you're really just kind of going in and adding um, the color 
over top. So in other words, my eraser is techless blue in this case, which is the paint I just the used. The last color that you just The previous did. color, yeah. exactly. So uh, <laughs> quick cleaning out here of my airbrush. So I've got the decal applied to the surface, and I'm just, I've, I've got a little puddle of water, so the decal's sort of floating. It's not quite dried out. It's not quite dry yet. And, and while, while, the, while it's still wet, I can use the brush and just kind of like push it around on the surface until I get the decal where I want it to be. And it's not gonna be super useful for me to <laughs> show you a top down because it's not zoomed in really, but. Um, you can just uh, you can just kind of smoosh the decal around on the surface until you get it where you where you want it, and as the liquid dries, the sort of mixture of water and microset, um, it will sort of become less pliable. You can't really push it around as much, and eventually it just sort of lays flat as the as the puddle completely evaporates, and then you're good. So here's the eraser in action. Yep. That one's already been had its erasing happening. So, I mean, it's it's nothing special, guys. I'm just literally going back in with the Teclas Blue. And if I had any splatter, I'm kind of looking for spots like that uh, where that happened, but there we go. So there is the blue already done airbrushing. See, Brett, you thought it was gonna take an hour. You know, I, I have this weird idea in my head of how long airbrushing takes. And it's this like, airbrushing is this massive undertaking that I need to like sit down and get all my tools and oh, I see. make a plan and this and then multiple, you know, colors and so it's this, it's still in my head, this like big deal. And I'm still sort of cal recalibrating that <laughs> as you've shown me that it can be just like a, oh, I just do this thing and spread, spread, spread and I'm done. I mean, it, it depends, right? Um, but a, a lot of a lot of stuff can. It doesn't can be have a quick to be process. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that. Um, I mean, somebody asked while I was producing a, a show the other day. Somebody asked, um, <clears throat> "Any tips for a new painter?" And I I gave advice that I think I've given on this stream before, which is, um, it, you know, if you were an adult and you had a decent enough income, and you you felt like you could afford an airbrush, and you were like, "Hey, I want to get into 40k, and I want to get into painting." Yeah, I would tell somebody. Just start with an airbrush. Um, right. Don't don't start painting things by hand. Yeah. Like that's harder. Right. Definitely harder. Yeah. Not as not as definitely as a an airbrush gives a better look for less effort. There's and, a little bit of a learning curve, and it's like less intuitive when you're getting started. Maybe that like paint some buy some crates. You know. Yeah. Buy, but, buy, but yeah, start with a train project. <coughs> All right, we have a, a super chat from 95 Ginger Rage. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, they say, just hobbying along and thought I'd ask for your best tip to keep cat hair out of my paint jobs. Oh I have my. Five cats, it is everywhere. I really enjoy you two and this channel. Thanks for all the tips. Adrian and I were just this talking all, about this. This is like all an you. An hour ago, like an hour before stream. And I was saying, um, uh, Ginger Rose, I was saying that I actually like to hobby here at the studio a lot. Um, especially when my wife is super busy um, and I can't really interact with her a lot anyway. She's working from home like a lot of people still. So I'm like, well, Megan's super busy, so I'm just going to go work here. Yeah. Um, so Zach, just for context, you and Meg have two cats. We have two right? cats. Um, yeah, I, I don't know a great answer to this. I hear, actually, I, I do. I do know a pretty good answer to this. Yeah, um, rent a studio space. No, that, that's, that's a cheat. <laughs> that's the um, non-answer. I, I know a, a decent answer. Uh, and it's something you should be doing anyway. You need to vacuum that room where you hobby. Yeah. Um, often. Just and all the time. All, all, like, and you should be doing that anyway. If you have five cats, 95 That's ginger rows. So, um, he, here's the second thing I'll say. We, this is kind of funny. We're now like a, like a, a appliance recommendation ch channel. We will have to put this <laughs> link up on, uh, <laughs> uh, under the show. Uh, for a long time, my wife and I had a particular type of vacuum that was like billed as a commercial vacuum. Oh, interesting. And it hmm. was, we thought it was good, but it started breaking down and we got a new vacuum. And it's like Shark, it's like the Shark vacuum. Yeah. Um, I forget the exact one, I'll have to figure out what I have. Yeah. And when we vacuumed our apartment for the first time with that vacuum, um, the stuff that came out of the carpet was bonkers. It yeah. was crazy. And what was so weird about it is we had just vacuumed that 
the breaking down vacuum like the week before. Yeah. So I will say get a really good vacuum that you know that you re read up on a vacuum cleaner. Um, with, with five cats and, and with all these pets uh, that, that you have. It's a battle. You, you should, it's a good investment anyway. Right. Um, but I will say for sure that since getting that vacuum, I'm trying to think when we got it, it was our old apartment. Um, it still happens. I still get cat hair and they're like so magnetic, right? You're sitting there and like it's not there and then you move your hand a certain way and suddenly there's like a piece of hair, right? Like, and it's like <laughs> they stay straight. Um, I also have two short hair cats. You're not going to get new cats, I know, but if you do get more cats, uh, get short hairs if it's a problem. Long hair, I think it's a little worse. Um, so, super good vacuum. Yeah. Is, is honestly my recommendation. It's not. It's not. Do you really do anything tool. before you sit down to hobby to sort of clear the space no. of dander or hair? No. I wonder if oh, like I, I, just use the airbrush I, to like. I, yeah. I, I kind of do that in general yeah. um, if things are getting annoying. Like if I'm there's like a speck or like a dust or yeah. a little piece of uh, something I filed off. I'm like ah, and I'll just spray the whole area down thin. I that, I did that this this. I mean, on a larger scale, I was working with a, a resin model out in the garage with like a respirator and I just, I didn't even want to deal with it in the house. And so I just like set it up in the garage. And when I was done, I, I took like a, my compressor out there and just like sprayed everything off with, with air just to like clean off the space. I know I, I don't have a cat, so I can't speak directly to that, but it's a similar you idea. You have a dog. Like, and, there's and dust they, everywhere. Dogs do the same thing. Pretty yeah, much. but like I don't think the hair, the hair collects on the floor. Oh, I see. Not so much as like on the countertops because the dog's not like jumping on the countertops yeah. in the same way. Well, that my cats cat do. don't do that, but it just, okay. it just, the hair is maybe lighter. I'm yeah, I think sure. that's it. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, I'll show a little masking here. It's not, it's not original. It's not, it's nothing special. This one especially, it's a piece of painter's tape. Okay, and that's for the diagonal wing which is um, six of my nine Xiphons have that. Three of my Xiphons I wanted to stripe on, so I, 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 I cut a stripe out with scissors. I use the guide, I use a guide here um, so it stays consistent among the, the three Xiphons. And by guide, I mean like I have a point on the model where I put the edge of the tape. And I just push it down and, that, and that's it. Now, um, if you were going to be doing a lot of models and do this, Again, well, first of all, again, I would always recommend the inverse masking method, not this masking yeah. method, which means plot out what you're what you're going to be doing and then uh, paint that area first. It's especially silly because even though I am going to add two colors to my black, like a like a true black and then a, a, a up light highlight. Frankly, I could have just saved myself even a step because my primer was black. Yeah, and I could have just used that as my true black. <laughs> so many other ways we could have done this. So there are better way. ways to do this. But look, sometimes you know you you're gonna do that. You're gonna you're gonna like paint like paint a model, and you know I should have known because um, my my uh, all my other models have for aeronautica have some sort of something that adds like a splash of color. Yeah. For the Tau, it's their purple energy glow. For my uh, Astra Militarum, a lot of their panels, and I did a lot of this with yellow. You just did panel, different and colored panels. And for the Oryx, they have just kind of like a lot of silver open panels where their plating is falling off. So I should have known that the Xiphon would need some way of getting a second color. Um, and I knew I wanted to do like black, white, and blue, um, and a little bit of red. And Well, not a little bit of red, quite a bit actually on the cockpit. Um, so once this is done, I'm going to use two colors here. Uh, these were, were Reaper colors that I grabbed off the studio wall. Dragon black, that's going to be first. That's basically a true black. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to use my, my, uh, my Sotar, but I could probably do this with, with the Patriot as well. Um, I really, more than anything, just wanted to make sure the Sotar was working correctly and it wasn't uh, its fault that this, this Minotaur Snow Blue was behaving like it was. Um, so just hitting there. There's the stripe. We're gonna come right back to that guy. And here is the diagonal. Um, in my mind, I'll probably use the stripe as if I ever use aces when I play, although I usually don't. Yeah. But the stripe, uh, the one I did already is number one, and that'll probably be my ace. And then I'll probably do like, a cut six and maybe number nine and maybe number six as an ace as well. Just do you want to case. talk about what aces are in the game? <clears throat> yeah, so if you play Aeronautica, uh, and this is kind of a cool hobbying endeavor, you can uh, paint one of your guys up to look a little different. 
because one of them gets to, well, you can uh, pay points to have one of them being an ace. And frankly, for in-game purposes, aces, uh, it's compelling. Aeronautic is one, is one of these games where you build like a, a list and then with just the planes and no upgrades and then right. you have like 20 points left over and yeah. it's enough for like a bunch of upgrades right. like 14 points yeah. but not enough for another plane so you're like okay time to go upgrade shopping <laughs> the ace is, is not one of the best ones yeah it's not usually with something you're immediately like ah oh, like the first thing you spend your up, your last few points on is to upgrade po one of your pilots to be an ace but uh, it's very narrative it's, it's super narrative it's cool from a hobby perspective to like call out one of your planes with Pain as like an extra yeah. extra special, you know, a couple of markings or a, an extra colored panel or something. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of cool hobby potent a lot of cool hobby potential for for aces. And there's also ways you can do campaign play in Aeronautica. So like your planes can like gain experience. Yes, that's and, true. And like you can uh, come across you can you can like up get S I don't know, maybe maybe I'm misremembering this, but can't you like, your pilots can become aces even without having to pay points for them? Yes, I think I think like so. Or, 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 or you kills get, or something yeah, in a yeah. campaign? It's insane, though. Like, it's a lot. With, with the way they're not... It's, like, yeah. it's not even ten, but it's I think it's five or six. Five, it's still like, insane. To have a plane survive through to, five games and not, not die? Well, well, okay, you could kill more than one game per play. Like, like your plane could kill two yeah. in one game and three. Right. But one, to get five in one game is unheard of from one plane. Right, it's going to be over multiple games. Your plane has to not die over multiple games and, and, and accumulate five kills. It's like very, it's very difficult to yeah. get that. Which, which, okay, I will say, I think if you were really good at Aeronautica, which I'm not sure anyone in the world is, um, I think you could be in a position where you're like, you know, like for the Tau, the Barracuda can do a lot of killing. And if you can kind of like get your opponent to, to really, uh, you can use like, the tiger sharks and kind of bully with the tiger, tiger yeah. sharks and make your opponent face head off of the tiger sharks and sneak the barracuda around to get like, right. some tailing fire. Yep. Then you can actually maybe get yeah. like get that happening. That's a thing. But by contrast, you know the tiger sharks are like the marauder destroyers. They can live. They can survive. Right. right. So marauder destroyer is one for me. That's with the true. Imperial Navy that I could see. Yeah, having there. bombers get it to ace level is something that that is probably not that difficult. Yeah. If they if they can now I'm wondering if they actually can if it has to be a fighter. I don't think so. I think you can. I think you can have ace bombers. I, I, I think so too. So what does ace do in a game? It allows you to reroll one dice per game. No, right? one roll. One roll. One complete roll that you made. So right. one weapons attacks. Exactly. So um, that that doesn't sound good, and it's not that good. It's um, not. Yeah, but it's also not nothing. It's also not nothing, and especially if it's like a high value gun. Yes. You know, you've got. Uh, a gun with a lot of shots. A I like it on Avenger. Orc, I like it on Orc Fight Obama or a, a or a Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt Fury. Fury. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jinx. <laughs> and uh, worth pointing out also that uh, in Aeronautica, the, which which is um, really, really just more of a board game feel. Rerolls are very rare, and I think we find it refreshing. I find it refreshing. You're like, yeah. roll. You need five. There's to no rerolls. Yeah, you need five to it's hit. Very, That's even, there's, the rerolls yeah. don't exist in the game. So it's like the one way to get a little fives, bit of rerolls. Unless you have an ace. Unless you have an ace. Once per game, you're like all lined up. This plane's just got to die. And you've completely flubbed the roll. You can reroll it. Yeah. So let's do a little masking reveal. All right. all right. Um, so uh, then we're going to move on to some cooking show magic. So carefully pull that off. There we go. Now, the second color I did was not too bright of a highlight. And you might not be able to see it on camera. But... It was called Noir Black, and it's, I, I think, similar. This is a similar relationship right here that I had as using uh, Citadel Abaddon Black and then Corvus Black. Is kind of how I would describe it. Um, if you wanted a more aggressive highlight on the black, I would use something like Mechanicus Standard Gray, like a medium gray. Um, I kept mine pretty chill, though. I kind of like the way the blue suddenly, like, bursts out of it. Um, so there they are. That right there, again, guys, you know we like to talk on stream. Like, could you be done? I would say no. But you're maybe a cockpit away from being done. Right? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's close. Um, so here is, so I'm, I'm now done with my custom uh, stencil, which is, is my striping stencil. 
And this catches up. And you up. just use masking tape for this, right? Yeah, it's this just a painter's tape. I mean, in, in another past past streams, we've done uh, some custom vinyl decals mm -hmm. when we did the crew tents. Yeah. Um, but this is just this is just masking tape, painter's tape. Yeah, nice, nice and easy. Okay. Um, and I've got my. Do you want to show off these? Um, yeah. These decals. So this is this is these have already been uh, highlighted so and it's um, and stenciled. And that catches uh, us up to where we're at. And so these, yeah, so these are have, have had the airbrushing work that Zach, Zach just did, uh, but now they've been uh, been decal applied. I asked Brett, and I, and I, and I like this look of, of having the U, I said about two thirds in the black, one third in the blue, and that's what he did, and I, I'm into it. And then on, on here, obviously it's it's right, the not the U. Centered, Omega? The Omega, the Alpha, um, not Alpha. Um, Altering symbol here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, these, you, uh, the decal is much more glossy than the background paint, and that's uh, that'll that'll get rectified when we do the the matte varnish at the end. So, I will say another thing. I Brett's exactly right. I will say another thing I like about Microsoul. Lots of times people say, "Oh, decal. That's got to be early on in the process of painting a miniature." I find if you use Microsoul, no, like that thing is that's there. Yeah, that, that's uh, like I, every now and then I, it helps it stick better. You're it helps saying. it stick very yeah. better. I feel like that's not going anywhere. When you just rubbed it there, I had my like I had my my pit in my stomach when you did that. I was yeah. like, oh my god, it's happened before. I think it's, it's happened to us. What are you doing? You're tempting fate. No, like, because oh I've, done this, I've done this. I've done this. Stop it! I know that. Like <laughs> that's why you, you, I do it super early. All right, in the let's process. move on. What's the next step? So. <laughs> to that end, next in the process, and we're gonna have to pass the bottle back and forth, which we kind of hate doing, but we'll make it work. Um, Brett, there's a couple brushes uh, around. Let me okay, yeah, I've one. got brushes. Okay, next in the process is a little bit of panel line washing or pin washing or recess washing, yeah. we call this. Another thing that is not gonna rub off as you work with the model. Okay, so I always do this process. This and decals, either or, one or the other. Um, but after I'm done like all my airbrushing, I go, Decals, recess washing, yep. or recess washing decals. So let's do a little bit. Uh, we're going to do a couple areas And we're here. not doing Nolan oil. We're doing... We're doing Drakenhof Nightshade, Drakenhof Nightshade, which is blue. Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, we're done with this. Yeah, you want to just dump that out? Yeah. Was that okay? Place that was water, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to add just a little bit in here for myself and then pass this to Brad. Okay. There we go. All Thank right. you, GT Probably. Hey, Titans. I bought this and I'm excited for Aeronautica. Thinking of using Turbo Dork Blue Steel on the Elves. How should I highlight wash to give them depth? Well, um, this is a great question, and actually I have some thoughts on this for you. Do you know what what is what color is Blue Steel? It's like a gunmetal. Blue sort of Steel a is like yeah, blue? it's a, it, no, it's light. It's very it's light, light blue. Okay. I've used it extensively. I used it on Brian's on the purple board that we have yeah. on Tabletop Titans. Okay. Um, I've used it, and um, actually, you know, Brett, real quick, and GT, before we get to your answer, if we could zoom, I'll kind of sure. show you guys where we're recess washing. We're not doing a lot, believe it or not. Um, anywhere where there is like a deep recess, so here, and we can ignore the black. If you were a completionist, you could, you could do the black with a non-oil, but I don't think it's gonna matter. Um, now, when I do my Suryani, by the way, um, which, oh, I have to say, and GT, I promise, I've not forgotten about you. I used to be a teacher. I knew how to go on wild tangents and come back to a kid's question. <laughs> uh, GT, you're not a kid. Not well, maybe you're a kid. kid. But, I'll, but I'll come back to your question. Um, I was just going to say I'm very excited because uh, Aeronautica is the first game that just completely uses a Suryani all over the place as a delineator of the craft world Eldar. Mm. So I as, feel com as, as contrasted with the Drukhari? Exactly. A lot of places still use the term Craft World Eldar. Yeah. Um, but I think that's probably like a, a, a thing they want to move away from. Yeah, for copyright uh, reasons. Yeah, I, this, yeah, and just to unify with, you know, Drukari and Yanari and blah, blah, blah. Um, so, Brian's uh, purple board, yeah, I, I did, and it had a lot of blue steel. It's a color I like because it, 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 it's, it mimics the real world. You see this color out in the real world. It, it's sometimes like industrial, like uh, like chemical plants. You'll see this kind of blue steel color. In Ben Stiller's face. Blue, what is that from? I don't get it. What? Ben it's Stiller's the, face? Yeah, it's his, his look, his, uh, his signature look, blue steel. 
Uh, why do I not? That movie where Ben Stiller's a male model. What's that? Oh, uh, z- z- uh, Chad will tell us. No, I z- can't remember Zoltan, the name. Zoltan or no, um, Zoolander. Zoolander, yeah, yeah. That's his okay, signature okay. look. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I do remember this. Um, so uh, this is the pop culture reference that the paint color is referencing. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that fine. All right, okay. Thank you. That's a rare uh, Brett pop culture reference. Yeah, that, 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 he that knows. I knew that the pop, pop, pop culture reference that Zach did not. All right, let's uh, chalk that up. Number one, Zach G- thirty six, <laughs> Brett one. GT. Um, I did my Orc Aeronautica fleet using um, uh, Turbo Dork Reds, and I, I I can show you actually. I have them. They're they're here. I can maybe grab one and kind of show you what I did to create interest with them. We've said on the stream before, Brian was here on the stream Monday, we were talking about this. Um, Adrian has talked about this. I think he, he feels similar to me. One of the big problems with, with, with uh, Turbo Dork paints and any metallic paints, and kind of leaning heavily into metallic, is that they really do sort of shut down a lot of other processes. Yeah. Um, you get kind of more limited shading ability. You can do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying a lot of people can't do it. but. It's, it looks great, right? but it tends to say, step in and be a bully and say, this is all metallic now. Yeah. And real light is going to play with this, right. not the light you create with your shading and painting. So um, there's pros and cons to that. So you, you're, you're uh, right in your avenue of thinking that you do have to get a little cr- clever about how you're going to make that work. Yep. So I'm going to show you one of the things I do with my orcs here in a second. Um, uh, but before I do, I do want to give you a word of caution. I love Turbo Dork paints. We've had them on the stream a lot. The color of Turbo Dork that has given me the most problem is blue steel. Mm. Um, I, I've gotten a few bottles that are kind of powdery and messy. The guys, um, G- Greg is, is kind of the main guy, um, and uh, oh, no. the Turbo Dork guys. Okay. They have a great Facebook page. Um, reach out to them if you have a problem. They're super cool about it. Um, and they, it's, it's happening less. It had, it had something to do with an older paint recipe, and if it got too cold oh, or something. Um, and they've, res- they've really resolved it, and they're doing an awesome job in the meantime. But um, just a little bit of heads up that, that I, I've had some issues. So here's actually what I recommend. If you want to use that GT, order it from Turbo Dork. Um, unless you know that your friendly local gaming store has gotten it in kind of recently. And that's actually the problem I got into is I was getting oh, I old see. bottles that had probably been on the shelf for about a year. Yeah. Whenever I ordered a fresh new bottle, it was, it was fine. Um, so here, here's what I'll say. Um, Brett, actually, let's switch to top down for a second. I'll go grab my Oryx. Okay. Um, you can show kind of where your recess yeah, sure. panel lining. I'm, I think I'm done already with mine. Yeah, I'm just doing uh, these Xiphon interceptors have some great uh, sort of radiator vents and... Um, Sort of thatch, thatching and uh, that that are going to take this recess wash really well. So I'm specifically applying this Drakenoff nightshade in those areas, and then additionally, uh, like Zach was saying, I'm using it strategically to do a little bit of panel highlighting, or so where these panels um, just. Uh, these have a little raised section, and I'm specifically letting it pool in uh, sort of edges around the raised section. Yep. Um, there's, there's really not like I, I don't actually spend a ton of time on these, on these with this, but there there are a few spots where you get where you get a good payout. I think. Um, okay, I grabbed an Orc Evy right. flyer. Here it is. By the way, you can see the difference in size between a Xiphon inter- interceptor and an Orc Evy bomb. Uh, this is Evy bomber. And one of the things I did, so I do have a couple of different colors of Turbo Dork. One is called um, Red Rum. That's the first color. And then I did a little bit of, of highlighting. Or, again, I always highlight here on wings on planes, and sometimes here and here I pick spots. For planes, I usually do nose, wing, wing, tail, tail. Five is a good number. Usually you want to do three or five spots, an odd number. So nose, and we did the same on the Xiphon. Nose, wing. And then here I did the fuselages here. I actually did an even number technically because I did the fin as well. Yeah. So um, boom, boom, boom. You can kind of see that a little bit, but it, it's it's diminishing returns. Um, like I'm saying, in that they don't interact in in you know um, the the seeing you, you can see it more in the Xiphon 
than you can on, on the, the Turbo Dork, uh, the Evi Bomber. And so what I did is a couple things. First, to edge highlight the Orc Evi Bomber, I played into the fact that the Orcs have like this chipping going on on their paint. And you can see some of the panels I even left uh, gray and like did a wash on them to make it look like it was really like this is the undercolor and this has been painted on, the red, which I think is probably the case for orcs. I also leaned heavily into decals. These decals are white. And what I did is I kind of carefully used the yellow wash to wash them. Um, and then, you know, if a little bit of yellow spills on the red, that's an okay look. But depending on your colors, you, you, be care you need to be careful. That looks really good. So um, if you were going to do the Asaryani and you're going to use the blue steel, <coughs> uh, here's, the, here's the Phoenix Bomber right here. Oh, my God, look how tiny the Phoenix Bomber is compared to the Evi Bomber. So, so, so funny. Um, you know, you're going to do this all blue steel. I would say blue steel, I, I would, again, you can see the Asaryani, one, two, three, four, and then the nose, which is kind of two parts uh, for, for your highlights. So I would probably actually hit this. Well, I, I might do... Um, uh, like a cool ranch or something first, um, a different Toberto color, like pretty deep down, honestly. Uh, and that's what I do for my Thousand Suns. It's cool ranch. And then I don't use blue steel, but I use a really similar color called uh, uh, Maguri, which is like the Japanese word for tuna, Maguro. And um, it's very similar. It's from their Japanese food inspired line, Japanese yeah. cuisine inspired line. So I might do a cool ranch and then hit a, a blue steel here, 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 here. The problem is. Uh, starting as blue steel is your main color, you don't have a lot of places to go. Yeah. It's very bright. But there is one thing you could try if you wanted to do it. You could do blue steel, and then for your highlight, you could use this color they have called Pearly Gates. That's what I was going to suggest. Yeah. Okay, great. And, and Pearly Gates is almost like, it's almost like a white silver. It's like a white, pearlescent white, yeah. Pearlescent white. And it's not quite the same kind of pearlescent as Motherlode, which is like the mother of pearl reflective uh, right. pink, green That's got pink. pinks and greens in it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that might be uh, an avenue there uh, uh, th that I would try. But you're going to need to find something else to, to make it interesting. With those colors, I'm kind of thinking yellow. Some yellow on that, that blue, yeah. like that blue metallic. That'd go really well. Okay, our next step is kind of the big one. We're going to paint the cockpit. Oh, and, man. And to paint the cockpit... It's all on the line. It, it's, this is all on the line. So this is, this is actually brushwork. I've got a, I'm going to take the Sotar out so Brett and I don't stab ourselves on the needle. Um, I've got a wet palette set up. Brett and I like this red grass game wet palette a lot. we got to put that on the show links. We probably, oh yeah, we probably f f always forget that one. Um, so I am painting the cockpit red. And to do the cockpit, we're going to do first, it's, it's Reaper, it's called Fresh Blood. Um, I get it kind of a, a, a soft, uh, milky consistency using the wet palette. Um, I'm gonna let Brett kind of work on one side of the palette here with his red, with the red. I'm gonna do the other. Brett, if you need a, I don't know, some of these brushes, are, you know me, I love my, uh, I, by mine, I mean I love your. <laughs> um, the Virtuosos. The Virtuosos. And Brett, can I get one of those squeeze bottles? I'm, yes. I wanna add a little bit of water to this. Um, this these are cheap, craft store brushes and they've got really sort of Those ones are dangly nothing. tips like there's individual hairs that are much longer than the rest of the brush so just taking a hobby knife and trimming the end of the brush do you want to use the or do you want to use the citadel synthetic nope. uh let me let me give this a try okay now that i've just invested all of this time and <laughs> yeah now when you go to paint this um the cockpit has you know uh i don't know what they're called but these are like crossbars. Crossbars. Cross yeah. If you know, I'm trying to avoid them, but I'm I'm keeping of keeping in mind the fact that it's okay if I don't, because if I don't, I'm going to clean it up with techless blue, and in fact, it can actually add if we only have to do a little bit of cleanup. So, if some of your spots get um, a little messy, it's it's okay. And I've got you know I'm doing the thin coats here. It's almost like a, like a wash that I kind of got it down to. But I want to have it very controlled. And, you know, we always do like our, our testing, our paint, making sure, just like with an airbrush, making sure we like our flow, making sure we like how it's coming off the brush. Yeah, red for whatever reason, I don't know the chemistry behind this, but red for whatever reason does not cover well at all. I have struggled to get good red 
over a, a dark color in the and past. We, yeah, and we have a couple of secrets to getting around that. First, <clears throat> one is not a secret. We're going to do two coats of this this color. Yeah, I, so I guess I would ask maybe a uh, hypothetical question, Zach. Mm -hmm. um, if you know going into this, because you have experience with this color paint, that you're going to have to do like somewhere between three and five coats of a color to get it to cover mm -hmm. properly. Yeah. Um, Ne never, by the way. How would you... Never three or five coats. Never? Okay. <laughs> no, no, coats. but go ahead. Sorry. Um, so a lot of coats. Yeah, yeah. Say, well, some number of coats. Um, might you consider instead doing like a, a light gray first? Like some kind of... Get, get yourself like a light gray primer and brush it on. Yeah. Uh, as a first coat. So like a paint that's specifically engineered to cover well, but is like a light neutral tone that you could then paint your second coat of red, and maybe then you only have to do two coats of red, for example. So now maybe you're taking this down from like four or five coats. I know you said that, that it wouldn't require that, but like, yeah. let's just say hypothetically, down to like two or three. Uh, Absol or, absolutely. And, like, is and, that something you've ever experimented with? Um, yes, actually. And and you know who else has done, who does this a lot is Adrian when he paints orange. Um, Got it. He, he does actually what was a great way to paint orange, which is to put white down first. Um, now white can also be problematic, but if you can get some white, some good coverage down with a white or a bone or something like that, then warmer, brighter colors like red and orange can, can go on top. Here's the deal that we're going to do. A couple things. First, um, we're, you know, we've got it kind of thin and we're going to do, we're going to do uh, two coats. Then we're going to do a, thir uh, um, a third coat that's actually our next color, which is not that different than this color. It's just a little more orange. Yep. Okay. And then finally, what we're going to do after that dries is we're going to use a clear red. And what the clear red's really going to do is just like fill in. Sort of like a glaze? Yeah, it's kind of like a glaze. It's, it's really going to fill in what we've done. So, yeah. um, Broken Chef had a question that I was waiting until you finished yeah. saying that because it, uh, it actually talks to this. Hey, guys. Thank, uh, first of all, thank you, Broken Chef. Uh, hey guys, I recently started fiddling with translucent paints like inks. Any tips for airbrushing them? Yeah, we airbrush these a lot. Um, and whenever you hear us on terrain talking about tinting things, yeah, that's usually what we're doing. We're doing like a Citadel Air. Uh, or excuse me, we're doing a Citadel, what they call I think a shade, right? Yeah, um, Like non-oil, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, they... They, they're, they're good for that. I, I think they're good for tinting things. Yeah, I mean, are there? Do you need to do anything special to them to airbrush them? You don't, right? No, I, I you don't. Just run them through, um, do you, you don't dilute them. You don't. No, and and in fact, I even did. I, I I'm into these. Um, Minotaur makes these ghost tints. They're called, um, and and sometimes people do them by hand, but I like them airbrushed as well. And I even used fresh blood um, on my Ogor. Uh, Great Mall Pot, which is like their terrain piece. Um, and I just blasted fresh blood on the airbrush, like on the slab where they're like, it's like their butcher shop type thing. Uh, and it looked great. It made like a big wet like look. Yeah. That was like not um, specific blood, but just like a place that's been bloody because it's been being worked on. Yeah. Uh, okay, that one's already I made. think uh, what we're doing here is not an actual tint or an no, ink, this right? Is, this like, is a normal... This, 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 paint, this paint we're using as the last step is a going to be more like a glaze, right? Like it's a... It's not a fully watered down... No, it's ink. called clear red. Uh, that's not it. It's called clear red and I can kind of show you guys the difference, but um, it, it's kind of a weird line that Reaper has with their clear colors. They're, they're not quite like where a Citadel wash would be. I feel like the difference is these clear paints they are thinner. They don't have as much pigment as like a proper acrylic paint. But whereas like inks and washes are meant to like run into the recesses, these the, clear paints are not. They like they do not do that. They're they're sort of they have less pigment, but they're not thin in the way that like an ink or a wash is. They don't have like low viscosity. They are just as viscous as a normal paint. They just have less pigment in them, if that makes sense. Another one of my favorite things though to get coverage. You were kind of asking about Brett with with these is to kind of cross paint. So, you know, my first coat goes north to south, and then my second coat goes east to west. Yeah, so hide your brush lines. <clears throat> yeah, um, I like that as well. 
typically once you start putting paint to a to a brush, you want to go um, or br you know once you load up your brush and start painting, you want to go all in the same direction. But once you go back for that second coat, you can switch the direction there. So um, what we're gonna do now while Brett's finishing up here, I'll show you guys. We're gonna do a uh, uh, like a sort of like a windshield type thing. And um, I'll show them maybe on like top down. It doesn't yeah. need to zoom. Um, the windshield here is, you know, most of them are kind of square like this. Let me draw it over here actually. Kind of square like this. And so we want to do, um, I'll grab a marker. It's a little, little easier to see. Um, we're going to do, uh, which way did I do on the finish? Can I see the finish guy for yep. a sec, Brett? It's a subtle effect. It's a subtle effect, um, but we're going to kind of go like this. And this is going to be the new orangish red, and this is what we've already, we've already done up here. So this is the new layer that we're doing over top. Um, and you can actually repeat this effect over and over and over again. And on my um, uh, Imperial Navy one I did, I have like a few, and I use a, this, this, uh, this MIG product called Transparador that we've looked bef at before where kind of work gets in and kind of makes an acrylic paint a little more transparent without making yeah. it runny like water. Uh, but we're not going to do that today. <laughs> this is similar to what I think of as the gem, gem effect or lens effect. It's just, <coughs> it's just you're uh, applying it to an entire flat window rather than like a curved or rounded gem. Exactly. Uh, but it's a similar, <clears throat> similar look. This color is called um, magma red. And it's one of these that I'm going to have to pour out this way. Uh, it is like a very, it's, it's a cool color. It's like very close to being orange or red. And like, I don't know, kind of like it looks orange here. But my eyes kind of also see it as red. Um, so it is, but it is definitively more of a yellow red is, is the point. Or, I, you know, really it's fair to say an orange red. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of water here. Near it on my wet palette, getting kind of a nice, somewhat runny consistency, because I'd rather do a couple of runny layers. And making sure it's off my finger, making sure I like the flow, and then going in. And again, we'll do a couple colors here. It, as Brett said, I went for a more subtle look this time. Um, if you go back and watch, uh, any of the Aeronautica game that Brett, Brian, and I played on Tabletop Titans this past Monday, you can actually see some of my other flyers, including uh, the Imperial Navy, where I did a little more um, gradients on the cockpit. It was a lot of work, and I, I, I thought the results were okay, um, but I didn't know that they were worth it. I kind of like... It, it almost just looked very painted. Like, it gave me this look of, like, a very cool painted look. Like... Somebody went in and really painted this model. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I feel like this is a classic delineator. Like some people really like in the in the 40k scale aircraft, some people really like having clear cockpits, clear glass cockpits, clear or clear plastic, I guess, and then doing a detailed interior. Uh, and then other people just really it's not that they're lazy and don't want to paint the clear cockpits or don't want to paint the detailed interior. They just prefer the look of a painted cockpit glass. Um, and I, I like that look a lot. Uh, it does also save you a lot of time on, on the larger models, not having to paint the inside of the cockpit. But And in Aeronautica, you don't, you don't have that option because they don't have that. Oh, come on, Zach. Not with that attitude. Oh, you mean like going in and painting a 3D look on a 2D? I mean... There's no interior, there's no... No, I'm saying you Dremel out the plastic. Oh, gosh. And you 3D print yourself oh, a geez. micro scale interior cockpit. And then you rebuild a new co cockpit over top of it, but with like little clear styrene panels. You know, that'd be so cool. You could do that. That'd be so cool, but um, the scale for Aeronautica <laughs> just doesn't quite <laughs> lend itself to that ever being that impressive. Now, what would be impressive if somebody did that with like you know, bought like 18 Xiphons and had like two just colossal fleets. Um, had just like two colossal fleets and just like a ton of, 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 of like 
guys facing off and did like a little diorama and everyone had that look. Yeah. And that would be like bonkers impressive. But I'm trying to just imagine the work involved in that and it sounds like It'd a be lot. lot. It'd be a lot. Um, now Brad and I are going to be playing Aeronautica again on over in Tabletop Titans, our sister network, this Monday with Bridger. Brett is the reigning champion, so Bridger is going to be taking these guys right here, the Ultramarines. Yeah, I hope you like these models. Bridger's in chat. I hope you like these models, Bridger. Paint them for you. Yeah. He's going to be, he's going to be piloting the Xiphons and two Storm Eagles. <laughs> yep. I will be running the Asuriani, my, which I'm painting, obviously, you guys saw, uh, to, look, to match my Siam Han. Uh, and we're going to have a, a little quick battle a dog fight, and the winner gets to take Brett on uh, in a in a troop landing mission. Troop landing mission, yeah. Um, which is cool, uh, and this is kind of the fun part of Aeronautica. It has this one mode of play that's dog fight. I feel like if there's such thing as competitive Aeronautica, you would just probably play dog fights. Right. Any other mode of play, I think kind of inherently disadvantages one of the players. One side or the other. A, a yeah. little bit, and in fact, in the book, they even kind of recommend you know, we did a bombing run with equal points, Brian and I, but they do actually recommend that the defender get a little less points. Yeah. Um, because it, the, the, the attacker has to, ha, has, has a little bit more work cut out for them. Yeah. Um, so we, we, uh, we're, we're playing a little bit of each, the troop landing and the, uh, the dog fight. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the specific missions are fun. They really change the nature of the game. I like... I like them. Uh, Aeronautica, I feel like, by its nature, is a narrative game, and so if you have a mission that leans into that, um, I'm 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 really into that. Well, what you and I used to do a lot when we were playing when we were playing a lot during COVID. Oh yeah. Brad, Brad and I made a little early COVID pod uh, where him and I just basically played Aeronautica in 40k. And what we were what we were doing actually is we would almost always just start with a dogfight, or we would always do like a dogfight and then something else, like. The dogfight just kind of gets it going. Yeah, um, it's like a warm-up game. It's like always like a warm-up game. Any point is interesting in a dogfight, any points level. Um, so, like, you always want to have that dogfight, I think, but then you always want to do, like a, like, a second mission after. Something else, yeah. Okay, okay. now, uh, I'm saying that these guys are these guys look good. Okay. How, how are you feeling about yours? Uh, so, I just finished the, the first red. Okay. And I'm going to move on to the orange. Next. Okay, sounds good. Um, but was, I think you're a step ahead of me. I am a step ahead of you. That's okay. I've had the practice. I got to do a few of these earlier today. Um, there they are. They don't look super impressive yet. We're going to have cleanup to do, and we're going to have glossing to do. And we also, before either of those steps, are going to do the clear red step. Um, the clear red is actually going to tone this down ever so slightly, which you're probably thinking it's already quite subtle. And I'm, I'm okay with that. So I'm taking a little bit of this clear red, uh, Reaper, clear red. A little bit of water. Uh, thank you for the donation, Angus Cameron. Hey guys, I'm painting an Admac Dragoon at the moment. I love the model. It's great hobbying with the Titans in the background. What a great day. The Dragoon is like the um, stabby chicken walker. Guy, yes. Right? Yeah. It, it, those are great models. It's an incredible model line. I love the new ponies. Right, the little the little horses that that they ride. They're super durable, right? Like the dragoons have yeah. like some special rules that make them extra hardcore to to try to kill. Um, I don't know. I'm not I fought sure. against them, and I'm just like, you have how many rules? What? Yeah. Like you're minus one to be hit. You have feel no pains on vehicles. You have armor, and I don't know, invulns or something or other. I mean, I guess as a tau player, minus one to be hit is just like it's frustrating, right? The ultimate defense. Yeah, so oh, be well. be kind, Angus, to your opponents with your admech. Yeah. You know, I, I think admech actually are this army where That's right. you can um, you can kind of like, if you have a good model line, and dragoons aren't supposed to be one of the super awesome things anyway, um, but if you have kind of like a like depth to your model line, you can really move up or down nicely. And so you can play like your casual games with your friends, and then you can also like go to a tournament and be like, hey, Time to, time to eat some mortal wounds, you know? <laughs> um, and it is such a cool model line. And I, I will say, I love the hustle from GW on this model line. You know, when I started playing in 5th edition, this army did not exist. It started existing at the end of 5th ed. And they, they have hustled on this model line and gotten a lot of stuff out. I Honestly, I think a lot of 
uh, people who love other 40K armies are probably a little jealous of the hustle that uh, Games Workshop has done on the uh, AdMech model line because within a decade, yep. it's a very big model line. Yep. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I started 40K, AdMech was not like a thing. You couldn't... Yeah, right. Yeah, they were in the fluff, but not... There's no, like, playable army. Right. There's no playable Adeptus Mechanicus army. To me, it also just feels like one of the... Most, you know, Space Marines are, 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 the, are really are like the, the famous kind of iconic thing in the universe. But Space Marines are almost like this thing that, uh, you know, you forget. And I'm trying to give an example here. Like when you, when you make something and then, you know, years later, other people have kind of copied a similar concept. We sometimes forget where the original came from. Right. right? Um, you know, this, this happens a lot with younger people and, and shows, you know. Uh, no. if, if you go back I'll, and I'll take incoming. No, yeah, like if you go back with it's not anyone. It's like if you go back and watch Seinfeld, it's not that jarring. Yeah, but like in 1992, in the day, it was some like, of those episodes right. were pretty jarring. But if you've seen Curb Your Enthusiasm, you're like, yeah, this is Seinfeld for network. Te this is Curb for network television. It's like not a thing, you know. Um, and you know. Space Marines are kind of like that. You know, we've seen Master Chief and Halo. We've seen like these different kind of like big guys come out that are like, and some existed before Space Marines as yeah. well, of course. But, uh, but Ag yeah. are solely very unique. And they're like, super unique. Yeah. I guess they're a little steampunky, but like steampunk with a ton of sci fi added in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. more sci fi than you normally add to steampunk. Um, so they're, they're just such a unique model line. Um, when I saw that, God, the guys on the horses are just oh, so yeah. cool. And the and flyer. The, and I, the dog, the dogs, the, dogs, the robo dogs. The guys on the horses, yeah. the flyers. Um, you know, I really don't like the flyers. In the 41st it's Millennium, like, I don't want like my airplanes to have like flapping wings. I feel like they're like... Yeah, pedal powered. I, I'm into it. I'm of not, course, they're also amazing no. somehow and super fast. But, um, okay, so um, after the uh, cockpit... Yep. Um, we can clean the cockpit crossbars up a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I, got, got, I, got some over, I got a little over paint. Yeah, mine are going to need a little bit of cleanup here. Um, but mostly I'm, I'm, they're, they're okay. Now, that's sort of what the bottle of leftover techless. Yeah. You, know, you can never get all the paint out of a bottle. Like, you just can't. <laughs> it's just simply not possible, right? So um, Unless it's unless it's null oil. Or agrax, yeah. yeah. Um, Angus, thank you again. He's saying, I'm combining a rad saturated and Mars Forge world. Any tips for making my boys look uh, irradiated? I also want to design a decal for radiated boys or radiated boys. Yeah. Tips. <sighs> a radiated look. What does something look like that's... So, like glowing green, right? Yeah. I think you could try an OSL... A green, an OSL green look, yeah, or yellow. Angus, if you're still in chat, uh, which I, I'm guessing you are, because you just sent that, are you airbrushing? Um, so if you're airbrushing, there's one way you can do it, and if you're not airbrushing, there's another way you can do it, and I'll go through both. Airbrushing uh, with green, I think what I would probably do is um, pick out a couple concepts on at least the medium-sized models, but even going down to the small size guys, like the rad guns, like the special weapons. Yep. Think squad, maybe. Don't even think, um, don't even think individual model. You may not want everyone in a Vanguard squad glowing green. It could look insane. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> certainly, like for my Thousand Sons, it's a sorcerer, and it's the Soul Reaper cannon. Yeah. I don't go in every rubric marine and give them like glowing eye, huge glowing eyes. It's like it kind of looks insane. Because it, it very quickly becomes a green paint scheme. Before, you know, if you go too overboard with it. It very quickly becomes a, a green paint scheme. And the glow, Brett's 100% Brett's right. And, and also the glow just becomes like what your army is about. It's like, he's, no one's at least behind your back. Not because they're mean. People are going to be like, he's the one where, with the very glowy ad mech. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, it's cool to use it to pick out the special weapons or the, you know, if there's some sergeant or something that, is a model that you care about in game, so you're like, oh, I need to make sure that like this guy, I don't accidentally pull him because he gives me plus one leadership, or he's got a special gun. Um, yeah, and, and Vanguard are a good example because they can all take a special gun. Rangers can take the Arcubus. You could you could put a little glowio in the Arcubus. So 
My favorite green glow recipe, I can absolutely tell you what it is. It starts with moot green, that's a citadel color. And we love moot green around here. I know Adrian loves moot green. Um, it's, it's a beautiful color. Moot green, it's like a yellowish white, no, yellowish green. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what you want. Very glowy. And then I use, um, it's called Phalanx Yellow. It's, uh, I think Phalanx Yellow, it's like the Necron named one. Yeah. So you just kind of like a, you know, if you, if you are airbrushing and you have a little uh, Sotar, like on something like a rad gun or like one of the special weapons, uh, you can do it that way. Now, Angus is saying that he is, um, Angus is saying he is going to do uh, not airbrush. So the, oh man, this gets harder. So yeah, so it, you know a little bit, but I, I think we can still not impossible. Yeah, just it, it still make it work. In this case, what you want to do is you want to dry brush, believe it or not. Yeah, and you want to, um, especially like on like a plasma gun or something like that, you're going to get your brush very, very uh, dry. So get your paint and like get on a piece of paper and really make sure. You, you know, you go until it's crazy dry. And then you start with that moot green. Yeah. And with that moot green, you're not quite as dry as you're going to be with the yellow. And I think of it more as like, how much are you pushing down into what you're trying to make glow? Uh, maybe I can actually demo it real quick here for you on paper. Because um, I don't have anything I need to make glow right now nearby, do I? I don't think so. Um, so let me let me just demo it on paper with, with not moot green and yellow. I'm trying to think, like imagine what the models look like. And are there like sources of radiation on the model? Because I wonder if well, there's- Well, the special guns, sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, you know, they look similar to plasma guns. They right, have the plasma coils. gun coils and stuff. So there's also, you could also do something. There's a, a room for um, uh, glazing or wet blending uh, in, in there too, if you wanted to sort of have do sort of a brushwork OSL almost, um, yeah, it would be really hard, and it would, but it would be an opportunity to grow a new skill. Um, my friend Brad is is engaging in a lot of that right now with uh, um, some some models, and he's doing like he's he started doing capes, and it's like oh my gosh, I've never. I've never like really done much wet blending and like 20 models in he's <laughs> turning yeah, out amazing yeah. amazing work so like it's like projects like this are a great opportunity to learn a new skill. Okay, so you're going to start uh, if we can do a little zoom here I'll yeah. I'll um, give Ang Angus some thoughts here. So <clears throat> you're going to start really make sure you get it off and like for your first like yeah like seats you don't want it like it, it should be pretty subtle like that. And um, you're you're going to hit that kind of like over the gun where you want the glow to come from. Okay, and you can see it. I mean, that's pretty similar to like, that's airbrushed. Yeah. That's not airbrushed. So practice on paper, and then if you can, practice on something raised, like like a, paint up a bit that you're not gonna use for your ad mag. Okay, so you're gonna start like there. Then you're gonna go to the next, to a next color. I'll actually, I'll actually jump to this snow white here, um, which is a little light. You might wanna do like the, like a color in between, like we could have done the techless blue. Uh, well, let's do it. Here we go. We got the techless blue right here. Get a little bit of that. Same thing. Uh, make sure you're getting it off your brush. Like it's not ready yet, right there. That's me getting it off the brush. Then you're gonna go in. It's ready, and you're gonna do the same thing. Okay, and you're gonna go like that. And then with the snow blue, you're gonna go. Oh, I already got some out already. Okay. Okay, now you see my brush still has the techless blue in it. Uh, maybe that's okay, actually. Yeah, this is like this is what this is what it is, and you can do this. This is sort of like the dry version of it, but you can do this all with, <clears throat> you know, with the, the paint being a wet puddle. Yep. And manipulating sort of the boundary between the different colors. Um, in a wet format as well. Now yeah. here is the la Here's the blue. And again, always test before you put it in your model. And now I can go in here and have kind of like the source of what it is that's glowing. We'll give it like a little moon shape here. Why not? Okay, so you can do the glow effect um, without an airbrush. 
Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's it takes a little longer, and um, it's not quite as uniform looking until you get really good at what you can do. So that's there great. You go. That's that's what I do, and so. The, the corrosion effect is going to look cool that you say Brian suggested. Um, but corroded and glowing is super cool. Yeah. Because it's like two very that's distinct a great, looks. It's yeah. a great combination. And the colors are complementary as well. <coughs> you know, you have like dark browns and rusty rusty, tone, yeah. rusty colors. And then you've got sort of bright greens and yellows. Yeah. And then the final thing I would say when you do glow effect over the course of an army um, I like to recommend one color typically, yeah. but it sort of depends. Like on my Tau, I do use blues and purples. Yep. Um, certainly don't go overboard with different colors. It can look um, silly. And um, I start to do that with my Thousand Suns, and I was like, well, there's Zinch, it'll be cool. And I was like, no, it, it just still doesn't look good. I, I need to focus on like one or two colors. All right, I've got this <clears throat> cockpit finished. It looks awesome. Um, that looks amazing. What's next? Okay. Next, we have, we've got some engines to put on, right? Yeah, next we've got engines to put on. So I pre-painted these, and I'll just tell you guys the process I did for these real quick. Um, I simply, oh, by the way, thanks, Crypt Shadow. He just says, huge Tau versus Imperium <laughs> air battle with Manta. Yeah, so the Imper Aeronautica currently does not have rules for a Manta or a model. Um, old Aeronautica did, the circa 2000... 2009 version of the game had uh, had a Manta. Um, it was a little ridiculous. Like a typical game of Aeronautica is like 125 points, and a Manta was 100 points. It was like <laughs> it's like your whole it's your whole army, unless oh you're bringing a, a massive 3,000 300 point game or something. Um, <clears throat> but the new game doesn't have rules for it, so um, it could be a terrain, or it could be an objective, or something, or it could be the new game doesn't have rules for it yet. Yet. Yeah. But uh, there's reasons I think it might. Now, Brett, check to see if I gave you... I have uh, two of one and one of the other. Yeah, check to make sure. The the little front uh, thing, yeah. fuselage, uh, not the, the car, uh, intake, is like, they're different. One goes on one side, one goes oh, on I the see. other side. Yeah. So check to make sure I gave you two different ones. Um, it's hard to tell. It's like oh, this. I see. Yeah, On yeah. the back side. Yeah. I do have two different ones, yes. Okay, they're good. Okay, so you're good. So I just need a second back engine. Um, oh, yeah, they do have two back engines. You're right. <laughs> and they have actually a third back engine, which is even a different little piece. Oh, different than the first two. Yes. Um, I highly recommend painting these different, um, especially if you're airbrushing. But actually, especially if you're not airbrushing, because these are quick to just... Uh, hit with a dry brush, like yeah. I would just hit them with a silver, with a with a dry brush, and yep. then I would just wash them with non oil, which is exactly what I did. I used my pink foam stick again. Um, you guys saw me use this last week for the Aeronautica terrain, and this time, rather than paint a film of of the Elmer's glue, I kind of went in and just went like put a bunch of dots down, and then just glued these yeah. with Elmer's glue to it, and then airbrushing, I just went. Shh, Turn it around, shh, super fast. Um, I knocked out both fleets like in a couple seconds. Uh, totally recommend it. Do you use super glue? I have super glue. I'm gonna use this terrifying Black Widow super glue. Oh my glue. gosh, this is like, this stuff, it looks... Scary. It looks scary, yeah. Um, why am I using this? Make sure. Black Widow super glue? Yeah, it, it's very, it, it's not necessary here at all. I, you know, I, I got to question like the marketing on some of this stuff. Like, what do poisonous spiders have to do with cyanoacrylate adhesives? Like, are there characteristics common amongst the two that make you think, oh, because this one is named Black Widow, it's going to be better than like the Daddy Long Legs super glue? Well, or the, like, like, why would you assume? I mean, I don't know. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? I do. I totally get what you're saying. This, I'm confused why they chose will, that, that animal to represent their, their this brand. This will ruin your 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 day <laughs> if you use it incorrectly. If you wake up and and find it in your boot, it will ruin mm -hmm. your day. <laughs> it will. Yeah, that for sure. Uh, I didn't even thought of that. But also, it is black. Right, and it stays black. Um, sorry, real quick. Okay. Just be careful. Let me go get my own super glue. You're gonna use your own. You gotta get my own. I, I super can give glue. you this. I mean, if you want to try it. Okay. 
Sorry, I just want to put these, these are your on. models. I'll glue it with whatever glue uh, you want. Just be careful because it, it, it stays black. Okay. So. Maybe that's like part of the advantage. Is that like, it, does this have the same super glue like thing when you, like if, if the, va the vapors will condense on the rest of your model and. I don't know about that actually. And, and um, cause it to be frosty. Yeah, and I don't think so. And also it sets kind of immediately. Um, it's just nice. I don't know. It is nice. It does work well. As super glue does. Yeah. Um, it sets quick. It sets aggressively. That didn't really go. Oh, I see why I'm doing it. I have it kind of in the recess. It sets aggressively. Maybe that's why it's called a Black Widow. Are Black yeah. Widows aggressive? Um, I mean, I guess they bite you if they can. Yeah, but do they like seek you out to bite you? No, I don't, I don't think, think anything do. does that really, does it? Um... Uh, I don't know. Hornets? Yeah. Murder hornets. Murder hornets. Um, okay, I'm going to leave this here, Brian, in case you need it. Now, the next step we're going to do after the after the uh, the glue is there, um, I have a uh, rune fang steel, Citadel rune fang steel, and we're going to do a little edge highlight on the Xiphon's metal parts. So... Um, if we can zoom in, I'll just show you guys where I'm going with that real quick. Uh, I make sure this is nice and this, I feel like Rune Fang Steel really needs to be shaken up kind of hardcore. Crip um, Shadow wanted to clarify, his comment about the Manta was, he was suggesting that we should play a 40k scale battle with the 40k scale Manta. Oh. But like a game of Aeronautica, essentially using 40k scale models. Oh, I see. That's I think fine. that's what he, I think that's what you're suggesting. Um, Brett, if you want to do a shoulder zoom, yes. here, I'll just show people where I put my uh, where I'm going to put the Rune Fang steel. So um, I want to add a little bit more interest here. We're thinking about kind of places where we want to pull the eyes, and I like the idea of of, of pulling the eyes towards the intakes here. So I just do a little bit of brushing on. Of Rune Fang Steel. Now, how did I paint? Where are we at currently with these? Oh, by the way, so you can see, I, I kind of layer it here to show to show like the leveling. I do the top, then I do the rim, and then I put a little one on the dot, on a little dot here on this thing, and it kind of just helps bring the front of the plane to life a little bit um, there in the metal. On the back, same thing, just do a little bit uh, around the edge. And then on this thing, I just kind of just trace a little bit here. Do a little bit around the edge again. Boom, boom. You can see these guys paint up quick. Um, we keep being in places where we could say we're almost done. I've got one more engine to put on. This middle engine is not... Um, the, you have the same... It's like flat, right? I just make sure I'm, I handed you the right one. Oh, okay. Let's see here. Let's. Take oh, I've got two of one. Yeah. I've got two of the wrong one. I see. My bad. Okay. Sorry, I, I uh, yanked it out Brett's hand and aggressively <laughs> did it because I was like, Black Widow! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there we go. My bad. I was like, if anyone knows how to assemble things, it's Brett. I was like, so something's wrong. I was like, he shouldn't be having problems. Okay, so I, he was doing it the inverse. Um, when, when we get a zoom again, you guys will see that, uh, yeah, there are, there are two different, so it's kind of like the rough looking engine that goes on the either side, and then the flat looking at, like out, outtake, not outtake, output or whatever, yeah. exhaust, exhaust goes yeah. in the middle. Sorry about that, Brett. No, it's fine. <laughs> My um, model is, Brett's like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you want to assemble at least, at least two of your models are wrong. <laughs> Maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, there's one little brushwork area we need to do, which is the gun. And we're going to be using this Iron Hands appropriate for a Space Marine. Sorry, do you have yeah. another oh, yeah. of the correct exhaust? Can I hand the bag? Yes, please? thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to do a little bit of brushwork real quick on the LAS cannons. The Xiphon is armed with quad LAS cannon. If you're playing Aeronautica. Quad LAS cannons. Who needs four LAS cannons? Well, in Aeronautica, you only hit on five, so it's... <laughs> so the more LAS cannons, the better. The more LAS cannons, the better. Um, 
these things, this the, the Xiphon is great in, in medium range. He wants to get in medium range and just blast away at these things. And then start blasting. Yeah, exactly. Super easy. Um, you're just going to, honestly, I would even do like what I kind of call an overbrush on it. And the, the barrels are going to kind of pick up, going to leave you with a little bit of recesses. I'm going to give that second to dry. That's another place I'm going to hit with Runefang Steel. Just right at the tips of the, of the top of the, of the Laz, uh, the, la the quad Laz. Is that better, Brett? Sorry That's way that. better. That's one way to uh, derail your producer is give him wrong things to put together. No worries. We, uh, we, we solved the prop mystery and uh, got, it, got it resolved. So, so Brett, edge highlighting with Runefang Steel. Yeah, so we did here in the front, one, yep. two, three. Yep. And then the back, just around the edges. And then I do put a little bit on the top here. Looks good. And then um, once the last cannon dries, mm -hmm. you can also do a little, do a little bit right there. Okay. Um, wow, we're so close to being finished, believe it or not. We just need some edge highlighting. Yeah, um, we need some edge highlighting. Then we're going to varnish, and then we're going to hit the cockpit with gloss, just so the cockpit is glossy, it is you know reflective a little bit. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and do the edge highlighting. Yeah. Um, actually, let me just borrow the. I'll hit the. Guy, real quick. Okay, just gonna hit the tips of my last cannons here. So um, I'll I'll put, I'll show you guys real quick here. Brett, can I? Oh, here he is, the finished one. <coughs> um, show you guys kind of the limited approach, limited um, but I think effective approach that we're doing here in the edge highlighting. I very selectively picked where I want to edge highlight, and what I decided I want to do with the Xiphon is I wanted to only edge highlight it the front of the edge highlight the front of the wings. I want to edge highlight the nose and a little bit what I guess I would call the cheek and also the top fin here. Okay, so let me show you um, how I do that and in addition to uh, edge highlighting only those areas, I also um, am doing sort of like a like a staggered edge highlight. So we want to get paint on, we're using the Snow White. This is also the final color we airbrushed. We want to get paint on the side of our brush, like so. This is something that I, it took me a little while to figure out. When I first started edge highlighting, I was like, oh, the more is better. It's like shows off more skill if you like edge highlight the entire model. And then I quickly realized that actually that's, that's not the case. Like uh, selective edge highlighting is a much more interesting look mm -hmm. than just edge highlighting every edge of the model because every edge doesn't collect the light because the light is coming from one direction. Yeah, you know? I, I, I'm into selective edge highlighting. Um, it, it lets the eye move around the model, which I, which I like. Okay, so there's the wings. And then for the nose, um, we selectively edge highlight as well, a little bit there, and I love selectively edge highlighting the nose. I love the nose of the Xiphon. Once you start to edge highlight the nose, this thing kind of starts to look like a dog a little bit. It's got like a little bit of a dog nose, and I'm into it. Uh, there's a little bump right there in the front that I want to put a little bit of paint. I think, yep, I did it on this guy. So there we go. Now here's the cheek, what I call the cheek. Give a couple little dots there. And then on the top, fin. Accentuate its bone structure. Accentuate its bone structure. Exactly. And there's our edge highlighting. You can see that's one model of edge highlighting. That's nice and quick. Um, you could go around and edge highlight the back if you don't like the look of um, specific and limited and staggered edge highlighting. You could go around and, and do the back. You could hit up here in the fuselage if you wanted to. Um, there's a few other places you could hit, but for me, I think that's that's it. And I'm kind of thinking about like where do I want my my viewer's eye to be drawn. Um, I want the model to look like it's this bright, nice thing sitting there that their eyes are drawn into. Then I want their eyes to kind of see the the decals and then move inward towards the towards the cockpit. But the edge highlighting oh, is like a little. Back to no, the... that's okay. The edge highlighting is like a little bonus there, um, and I've got now I've got like blue snow all over me. So um, there we go. <clears throat> okay, easy step. 
Yeah, what, what do we got left? Left is... Just some varnish. Doing a little varnish. I'm going to hit it kind of quick here. And then all that's left, we let that dry for a sec. And then all that's left is uh, we're, we're going to go in with a brush and brush paint. Uh, brush paint the, the cockpit. Uh, to gloss. gloss. Yeah, so we've got a gloss varnish in a bottle that we're going to brush paint on selectively. So that way the, the cockpit will look shiny, but the rest of the model will be matte the way we want it. Yep. Which is, here is the finished one. And this is one of my favorite effects, the idea of using like not only different colors on the model to, uh, to add visual interest, but different finishes. Matte, yes. Matte versus gloss. Yep. It's like, it's a different dimension. Yes. Um, and like super interesting to me right now. And the same with that verdigris is super interesting to you right now. Yeah, the, ver, well, I think I'm through my verdigris stage. You're through your verdigris phase? It's just okay. like a fact of life for me now. I'm like, you never really leave the verdigris phase. And I agree with you, Brett. And the, the thing I'm also into right now, like when I did my Beast Claw Raiders is, previously I like to really focus on like one color, like red or blue or like, but with my Raiders, I got really into the idea, like you're saying, like another way to create contrast in warmth versus coolness. Was like a, what was like a look I did for my Beast Claw Raiders, but I think you're exactly right. Like the idea of saying, "Oh, like gloss finish versus matte finish yep. in the same model," and kind of creating like visual contrast and interest, uh, super fun. Uh, and little Aeronautica minis, super useful for all this stuff. Um, just great to try out. Also, by Testing the way, out different, yeah. weirdly inexpensive. <clears throat> yeah, weirdly inexpensive game. The the box set is reasonably priced. If you pick up the, um, there are three box sets out now, and I think the first one can be hard to find, Wings of Vengeance. It's, uh, it was Na Imperial uh, Navy versus Orcs. And then Skies of Fire is the Tau versus Imperial Navy. And, and now, they, added, they added new ships with Skies of Fire. They did so add if you, new ships, yeah. <clears throat> I saw somebody in the Discord the other day saying they wanted to collect Imperial Navy, and they were going through, like, hey, I was looking through Battle Scribe, and there's, like, I got the Wings of Vengeance box, and but like half, it only has like it's missing two or three ship types, and it's oh because they're in Skies of Fire. The Astro Militarum ones technically. Are. Ah, that's right, that's right. Now we did forget one thing, and thank you, Broken Chef. Uh, we did some fan stuff. We did do fan stuff. Oh, we fan stuff. Let's look at some fan stuff while we wrap up here. All right, let's we see. We have some it. cool stuff here. Um, so this is a piece of terrain uh, for uh, <clears throat> Crisis, um, Mar Marvel Crisis Protocol, uh, as well as some, some Crisis Protocol minis. These are great. Yeah. Um, this, this game is something that I've wanted to try. I've not had an opportunity, but um, they look amazing. I'm not a big superhero fan, but I just want to paint the minis. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious what the gameplay is like. I think gameplay will make or break that for me. Sure, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, of course. I, <laughs> right. Yeah, that makes this sense. This is a 40k scale um, Fire Raptor. Uh, the Fire Raptor is in Aeronautica. I have one right here. Uh, it's just we're, we're not painting it tonight. We'll show it in a sec, yeah. We'll uh, show no, you that's the Storm Eagle. Oh, this is the Storm Eagle. Yeah. The Fire Raptor hasn't actually been released hasn't yet. Hasn't been released yet. But it's about to be. Coming yeah. soon. TM. Do you need some uh, varnish? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not quite done yet with okay. my metallic. Um, yeah. Uh, this. Um, oh, this one is friends. Um, uh, White Scar's biker. He uh, he just finished this one. It looks really good. Um, yeah. Back to our our crisis protocol terrain. This is Nelson and Murdoch. Uh, Daredevils. Uh, Matt Murdoch is. Um, do I know what any of this is? What? Daredevil, the superhero? Oh, Daredevil. Can I yeah, have the he's a lawyer. Out thingy? He's a lawyer. Yes, I know who uh, that, that's his, but also... That's his law firm. The, the jar. This is Drazar, Master of Blades. Yeah, this looks amazing. He looks badass. Yeah, great picture. Uh, what is going on here? This, this is, is an AdMech guy. This is huh? an AdMech guy, yeah. Um, and it's a conversion, so he, I think he added all of these mechadendrites. Okay. Uh, and so it was a... Early stage, he hasn't painted it yet, but it's a yeah. It sweet looks pretty cool. The core spacing looks good too. Yeah, yeah. Um, these guys, these are my boys. I played a, uh, I played this army on, on the stream, uh, and I'm really into the Bone Reapers. They're super fun, and those monsters are very cool. Also, my boy, a sermon. Uh, he's really good. Yeah. And this is a model that when the Asuriani get redone, boy, I, I mean, I think that model. 
could just be crazy beautiful. Uh, I'm imagining something just yeah. out of this world. Yep. Um, very dynamic, standing on something cool, lunging. <laughs> um, he is he is the Phoenix Doing Lord. Epic deeds. Yeah, he is the Phoenix Lord. That is the Dire Avengers. Yep. Phoenix Lord. I think a Dire Avengers, frankly, is like. In my mind, I like playing good guys. So in my mind, the Asuriani are like the ultimate good guys in the 40k universe. Except they're not really. Well, I agree, disagree. And I think that the Dire Avengers particularly are... They're the ultimate, like, end justifies the means uh, race, right? Uh, I suppose. Specifically, the Simhan aren't quite into that as much. Um, so maybe they are... They, are they, they, take the, they take the long view and they're like, you know what? 10,000 years from now, you're going to thank us for, for massacring all of you right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is, can be hard to wrap your head around. But you know what? When you can see into the future, what do you do? Like, yeah, you got to do that kind of stuff. Um, real quick, I'll show you guys. I have uh, uh, Brett showed the Storm Eagle that, or the Fire Route that looked amazing. Here's the Storm Eagle model. This also comes in the new box uh, in Wrath of Angels. You get two of these. Um, there it is compared to the Xiphon. So it is bigger, it is obviously slower. It is, uh, I, mine here is just in the airbrush stage. I'm, I'm about to work on the brushwork this weekend. Uh, and you guys uh, can be seeing this Monday on Tabletop Titans. Get us ready for Monday, yeah. Piloting bridge, piloted by Bridger. Um, I am hoping to seriously just like blow this thing out of the sky. It's important that we have transports because one of the mission we're playing second is a is a troop drop off mission, right? This guy's, act, yeah, exactly. This guy's actually really slow, just clogging along. Just waiting for Brett to, to catch up here. Pew 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 pew. <laughs> um, that's oh no, this thing came off. It wasn't glued. And, it's got and some it, missile racks or something. Yeah, and I deserved it because I was playing with my uh, 40k aeronautica models. How dare you play with your models, Zach? Like a, like a child. <sighs> okay, I need to edge highlight this thing and then I'm done. Fun. Or do you want to do it? No, you do it. Okay, which color do I use? Oh. This one? Snow blue. Snow blue. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. I am totally done with this dude. So you want to show it off? Yeah, I'm going to put him on the... I'm going to have him join number three here, joining number two, <clears throat> or number one. Oh, sorry. Just real quick. Yes. Uh, before we do that, uh, I want to show overlay one. Oh, yeah. Uh, that thing we just did, if you're new here, uh, we do this every week when we, uh, when we do our live shows. Uh, if you go to the video description down below, there's a link to a Discord. You can drop pictures of models you're working on in one of the hobby channels uh, in the Discord. Uh, Whatever is appropriate. There's a daily progress channel. There's a finished products channel. There's a model criticisms channel. Um, yeah. So whatever is appropriate, we go through them before each show. We pick out some things that catch our eye, and then we showcase them during the during the during the show. So please uh, join us on Discord. Absolutely. And uh, share pictures of what you're working on. One thing I also want to mention in the Discord now, there is a Hobby Times Talk uh, yes. channel. Channel, right. um, drop in there and add me or Brett with some things you'd like to see on Hobby Titans because um, I have a lot of ideas, but I don't have an endless amount of ideas. And yeah, and I have a lot of ideas, but they are ninety percent Tau. And so, <laughs> if you guys just want this to be, become Tau Titans, oh, yeah. uh, Tau Hobbying, Tau Hobbying. Um, that's kind of what it'll end up with if Zach <laughs> leaves it up to me. Yeah, so um, we, we have a lot of ideas and we have a lot of things because um, we have a lot of projects that we're doing with Titans coming down the next few months. They occupy a lot of our time here. So, for example, we, no surprise, have are gearing up for a couple other terrain projects um, in the next few months. But... In between there, you know, yeah, we occasionally will paint something for one of our armies or, um, you know, like I, I have some Wraith Asuriani to do. But, you know, we don't always want to keep showing how does Zach paint his Saim Han. Like, we get it. You guys get it. I painted it in a particular way. It's one of the reasons I didn't, I didn't show um, them on the stream today. You know, I just said, let's yep. do the Xiphon. Um, so if you guys have something, you say, oh, I'd like to see this technique, um, or, you know, and, and how you guys go through that. Uh, put it in there. The other thing that channel is really good for, this is um, Hobby Titans Talk, is uh, if you have questions about the show after the fact, you're, you're, the stream's over and you're like, hey, like, what was that tool you used or yeah. what was that color you used? Can you, like, you know, where did you get that thing? Um, feel free to drop it there and we'll, 
uh, we can chat about the the show after the show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it on the. All right. Yeah. Let's switch over to Glam Cam. Well, there there's two of them now. Now there's two. <laughs> Sweet. Um. So I actually yeah, I was checking to see if I highlighted things kind of similarly, and it looks like I did. Um. Man, I gotta say, I love these guys. I first experienced the Xiphon when I was playing Horse Heresy. They were very popular in the Horse Heresy circles because, again, it is a hipster kind of a community. And um, the Xiphon uh, flyers were just a little more popular in Heresy than they were in 40k at the time. This was a few years back. And it seemed like a lot of my opponents had one of these. And I never picked one up for my, thousand, for my Heresy Thousand Sons, but maybe one day I will. I did pick up, ironically, I do have a, a half, half assembled uh, Thousand Suns um, uh, Storm Eagle. Oh. Um, boy, that thing is a nightmare to assemble at, at Forge World size. By the way, this is another way to get your hands on what I guess is kind of a Forge World model uh, in plastic and super easy to assemble. Man, I can, I'm can. i guessing the Xiphon resin is probably a nightmare to assemble. <laughs> <laughs> but oh my gosh, the Storm Eagle! If you've ever, if you want to know, if you guys have, many of you already know this out there, but I will say, oh my gosh, I think it is a legend among the worst models to assemble. Really? Yes. Hmm. So bad. I got about halfway and start talking to our friend KK and be like, hey, can I pay you to put the rest of this together? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Heresy kind of fell off, and one day it'll we'll get back to it. But in the meantime. Here's the Xiphon, and it is super old. This Xiphon plane is older than Tau Civilization. Um, maybe not these ones in particular. Is that real? Yeah. They're, Are these all relics? They're, they're, well, I don't know when, like, a particular, if they still make them, if they have the, the template form, right? The, STC. The STC form or not, but they've been around pretty much unmodified uh, since, like, you know, before the heresy. Yeah. So um, they are... A very ancient plane. Uh, so you have a Storm Eagle, cool. but not a Thunderhawk. Is that right? Do you nope. still have it? Uh, the Storm Eagle? Yeah. I do. Is yeah. it? Did it ever get assembled? Nope. So if you want to see Zach assemble his Storm Eagle <laughs> on stream, <laughs> Finish go, to, assembling. go to Hobby Titan's talk and yeah. um, vote there. I, I have it. It is a nightmare. It is the, yeah, it's, it's basically they take the Storm Raven kit. Yeah. And they add like this extender to it. Mm, okay. And they don't add the extender in a way that, you know. It's not very convenient. It's not great. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was a rough kit to put together. Excuse me, guys. Um, long week here at, at the studio. Um, rough, rough kit to put together, but um, I, 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 will, I will do it at some point. Um, All right. How are we doing? I think I did it. Okay. Well, we need varnish, but let's let's show them off. Let's oh yeah, put varnish. Them, uh, let's put them on for now. You well, want, no, you let's, varnish just varnish them. It? let's varnish them. Yeah, we got to varnish. Okay. Them. Oh, this looks amazing. Oh, you did a highlight that I like too. I didn't do this one. I actually might go back. The and center do that. one, yeah. That's center one. Yeah. yeah, I might do that. I like that. Um, okay, gonna hit Brett's quick with a varnish. Uh, and boom, nice and easy. Cool. And then the only other thing we need to do is just uh, the. Did you do that on yours? The gloss? Yeah. I did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, we got to hit him with the gloss. Yeah. Um, zoom in here, Brett. I'll show the, I want to show sure. the cool highlight you did. Brett did this cool highlight that I think I'm going to go back and add. Uh, this, he did this one right here. So you can see like the, the take, oh, and this was a good move actually, Brett, on your behalf because um, I, I didn't realize that you had all black right here. We could hit that black with some, um, uh, I don't know. I don't think I want to actually. Ministratum gray or something. Yeah, maybe. I think it'd be too. I'd have to think about that. Um, yeah, I don't know that I want to. So I sort so, of imagined that the light was coming from the front and the right. Yeah. And so I hit sort of those front right edges there. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, but he didn't have mine. I've only done two so far to completion, and they both have the stripe. So I got the edge highlight a little bit over here more. Yeah. But I think like this adds a little bit more. Uh, the one you did. And guys, yeah, like the edge highlighting, like using it sparingly like this is a cool look. And like Brett's saying, it kind of adds like this, uh, I don't know, it, it adds visual interest without like being an intention hog, you know? <laughs> and you can do a lot of it and then you get sort of, if it's a spectrum, if you do a lot of it, you get into like the cell shading territory and that's a complete other visual style that some people really like. 
Um, you can you can go there if you want, but so then we're we not just there yet. we just do real quick. Uh, this is Vallejo Mecca gloss varnish, not particularly complex of a step. Make sure you're not putting it on all globby. Boom, 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 and Xiphon number two, painted by Brett, Maverick Lee. Yeah, um, Bridger, if you're still in chat, you should start thinking about the names of the pilots for all of your planes for Monday. Uh, <laughs> it's a requirement that you have all your, your plane pilots named. Uh, you too, Zach. Okay. Right? Yes. <laughs> with Eldar names? Yeah, with Eldar <laughs> names. Uh, cool. I like the uh, diagonal wing one. That's actually the first finished one I've seen. Here they are, the Xiphons. A squadron of a, Xiphons. A squadron of Xiphons. Uh, this is actually what Bridger will have on Monday. Three of these dudes plus two uh, Storm Eagles against my three Nightwings and two Phoenixes. Ready to do some intercepting. Five on five. Um, just like street basketball. Just like street basketball and real basketball. And real basketball. <laughs> Brad's like, sorry, I don't play real basketball. <laughs> if you wouldn't even call that real basketball. Um, that sounds suspiciously like a sport to me. Guys, Aeronautica, so fast to paint up. Um, I am going to go home tonight, go to bed, and wake up in the morning, spend the day with my wife, and I'm going to be painting these, and I'm going to be done by the end of the day. And I have hmm, six more Xiphons to kind of finish, two Storm Ravens, Nine Nightwings and six Phoenix Bombers. That sounds insane. That but sounds a lot. It's like saying you have like 20 objective markers to paint. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I have 20 slightly, slightly elaborate yeah. objective markers to paint. Right, um, right. Not even like 20 Fire Warriors. It's not even close to 20 Fire Warriors. It's way easier. Right. Yeah, these are, they're an absolute blast to paint. They're super fun. You get... Uh, with a, just a few hours invested, you have something that you can be really proud of and really happy about. The, the, the painting is very rewarding. Yeah. Um, it moves quickly. And at the end, and you can play a game with just a handful of models. So. Yep. Uh, the boxes are actually perfect. In Love fact, uh, sorry, the, the Wrath of Angels box is literally what Bridger and I are playing. Not even. We're dropping a Phoenix Bomber. So we even have one too many planes from yep. that. Yeah. And that's a good size game. It's perfect. Uh, Brett, what do you think? Anything else? No. Uh, what are we doing here next week? Yeah, so next week... On Wednesday. Ne week. Yeah, next week on Wednesday, normal time. Yep. Uh, we actually have a special guest on. Um, and we're going to be painting an old favorite of ours here at Hobby Titans Trees. Trees! Now, yes. our special guest, um, her name is Kat uh, Titus, and she is a super awesome painter. Um, so we talk a lot about like Instagram painters. Kat is a very high level painter and she's the type of painter that does not necessarily paint armies. She paints a model and spends a few weeks on a model. Yeah. Um, so we Her work is amazing. It's amazing. Um, we convinced her to paint a model in about, I said, two and a half hours tops. It's a tree. It's going to be an autumn tree. Um, and we're going to sit down here and I'm going to follow along and we're going to paint one autumn tree. Uh, and it is quite stunning. We already have one in the studio. Um, I guess we, well, I don't, we shouldn't sneak peek it. No, we shouldn't. No, we won't sneak peek it. Um, but we will, you will see it on Tuesday when it goes up on the thumbnail. Um, so it is going to be uh, a little different than what we're used to here. Really diving in deep into, into a single model. Not yep. something we do here a lot. Yeah. You know, we, we say a lot like, oh, how fast can you paint up an aeronautical fleet? Mm, I'm going to paint mine tomorrow. <laughs> um, yeah, this will be about like taking quality to the max instead of trying exactly. to maximize quality and quantity. Exactly. Um, now, finally, for Brad and I, you can see us again on Tabletop Titans on Monday. Yeah, so these models that we painted tonight, we'll be playing with them on Monday on our sister channel, Tabletop Titans. Yep. Uh, the w loser, actually, I think we were saying loser has to play you. Me and Bridger are gonna play. Okay. Loser has the uh, horror of the facing, opportunity of redeeming themselves. Of redeeming themselves against okay. Brett the Maverick Lee and his Tau. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, and the Tau. So, um, guys, I think that's it. Brett, anything else? Yeah. If you want to tune in and see one of these two chumps get get uh, 
<laughs> get one shot in and yeah. have the game be over on turn two again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm spoiling it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Brian, poor guy. Um, so, oh, so much smack Oh, talk. there was such a great meme. It was that one where, like, Brian was like, hey, I can't wait to play Aeronautica. And it was like you and a towel <laughs> Cur- just curb beating stop. him up. Just beating him up. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, awesome. Guys, as we always say here, be kind to yourself, to each other, and always be creating.